After supper, Jesus took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. In Old Testament times, God agreed to forgive people's sins if they would bring animals for the priests to sacrifice. When this sacrificial system was inaugurated, the covenant between God and his people was sealed with the blood of animals. But animal blood did not in itself remove sin. Only God can forgive sin. And animal sacrifices had to, be, had to be repeated day after day and year after year. Jesus instituted a new covenant or agreement between God and his people. Under this new covenant or agreement, Jesus would die in the place of sinners. Unlike the blood of animals, his blood, because he is God, would remove the sins of all who put their faith in him. Jesus' sacrifice would never have to be repeated. It would be good for all eternity. The prophets looked forward to this new covenant that would fulfill the old sacrificial agreement. And John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world.
through 15. You were dead because of your sins, and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. And then God made you alive with Christ, for He forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took those away by nailing our sins to the cross. showered His kindness on us. This is also called God's grace. This is His voluntary and loving favor given to those He saves. We can't earn salvation, nor do we deserve it. No religious, intellectual, or moral effort can gain it, because it only comes from God's mercy and love. Without God's grace, no one can be saved. To receive it, we must acknowledge that we cannot save ourselves, that only God can save us. And that our only way to receive this loving faith is through faith in Christ.
Matthew 28, 1 through 6. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. <coughs> Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled away the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman. <coughs> Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. <laughs> Jesus' resurrection is the key to the Christian faith. Why is that? One, just as Jesus promised, he rose from the dead. We can be confident, therefore, that he will accomplish everything that he promised. Yes. Jesus' bodily resurrection shows us that the living Christ is ruler of God's eternal kingdom, not a false prophet or imposter. We can be certain of our, resurre of our resurrection because he was resurrected. Yeah. Death is not the end. <coughs> there is future life. And the power that brought Jesus back to life is available to us to bring our spiritually dead selves back to life. Amen. The resurrection is the basis for the church's witness to the world. Yeah. Jesus is more than just a human leader. He is the Son of God. Amen. 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 Let no one caught in sin remain Inside the body of inward shame We fix our eyes upon the cross And run to Him who showed great love and blair For us Freely you bled for us. Christ is risen from the dead. Tread me over death by death. Come away, come away. Come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead. We are one with him again. Come away, come away. Come and rise up from the grave. Beneath the weight of all our sin, you bow to none but heaven's will. No scheme of hell, no scoffer's crown, no burden great can hold you down in strength. You Forever let your church proclaim. Christ is risen from the dead, trembling over death by death. Come away, come away, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead, we are one with Him again. Come away, come away. Come and rise up from the grave. Oh, yeah. where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? Oh, church, come stand in the light. The glory of God has defeated the night. Christ is risen from the dead. Trembling over death by death Come away, come away Come and rise up from the grave Christ is risen from the dead We are one with Him again Come away, come away Come and rise up from the grave Christ is risen from the dead Trembling over death by death Come away, come away Come and rise up from the grave, Christ 
Once I went along, got a long, long way to go. I thought I, I had no one who would share my heaven. Then my mind went so mad to a place I'd never been. And I As I looked at my Savior, I cried, Oh, take me away. There was blood flowing down, and thorns pierced his head. He cried, Father, forgive him, then my Savior. Well, I stood there in silence, thinking, Lord, how can this be? That your beloved son, he gave his life just for me. Oh, and I heard a sweet voice whisper, child, lift up your for the one that you see hanging there, Jesus, he's not dead. He's alive, he's alive. No death could not hold him. He's alive, he's alive. Oh, the stone it was rolled away. Satan thought. Jesus died on that tree. Yeah, Jesus came back from the grave and he won the victory. He's alive, he's alive. No death could not hold him. He's alive, he's alive. Oh, the storm. Satan thought he won the battle when Jesus died on that tree. Heaven, Jesus came back from the grave and he won the victory. Yes, Jesus came back from the grave and he won the victory. Yeah. 
see when God said in 404, 4004 BC when God said in the beginning time started and since then we've been keeping time for 6,000 years or so it's been rolling but now the book of Revelation tells us that one of these days that there's going to be an angel descend from heaven I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow upon his head and his face was as it were the sun and his feet were as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the earth, and he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up. and I started to write, and that voice said, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and listen to what he said. And he swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven, that's day one, two, and four of creation, Genesis story, Genesis one, and all the things that therein are, and the earth, day one, and all the things that therein are, day two and day six, and the sea, day three, and all things that therein are. In other words, the one in John 1 that was in the beginning that created all this, that spoke it into existence, stands up and this angel declares by him, by Jesus Christ, the creator of all things, that time shall be no more. You see, this timeline that we're on right now started in Genesis 1-1. It's going to end in Revelation. Amen. This time is going to stop. Jesus doesn't wear a Rolex. He doesn't keep time. There wasn't any time until he said in the beginning, which means something started. Clock started ticking. Time started running. Isn't it interesting though that though we've been here over 6,000 years, we still call this 2016. Isn't that amazing? Well, what makes it so amazing and why that is is because that 4,000 years into this timeline that we're on now when we were celebrating first the sacrificial lamb, some point in that time, the only time that God's ever interrupted time since he started in Genesis 1-1 was when his boy was born. 
And God said, stop time. And let's start it again. Something significant has happened. The only time in the history of time till it started until whenever it is, it ends. God stopped it and started it again. God put a punctuation mark in the timeline of time. The importance of His Son as we celebrate Jesus. Now we're getting ready to take communion. We're going to have a song. Our invitation this morning is going to be this video and this song that you're going to see right now just in a moment. The altar is open now. There will be no invitation extended after this song ends. We'll go right into the communion service. The deacons, when this song ends, the deacons will be up here and we'll start in communion. Now's the time for you, if you're not right with the Lord, if there's anything between you and the Lord, to get it saved. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's what Easter's all about. Jesus rose so you could be saved and you could live forever in heaven with Him. Regardless of what you've done, that's what this story's about. That's what this day's about. So if you've never been saved, I invite you, while this video's playing, invite Jesus into your heart. Lord, I'm a sinner. I've sinned. I've failed you. I can't save myself. I need you to save me. You paid for my sins on Calvary. I don't have to pay. I don't have to suffer anymore. I give my life to you. I accept you as my Savior. I ask you to come into, heart, into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. All is going to be open. I invite you to come. I'll be up here. Or if there's something in your life that would hinder you from taking communion, if there's a known continuing sin in your life, you're not worthy to take communion. We're none of us are worthy even if there's not. But you can't take it. You'll be eating and drinking damnation to yourself, the Bible tells us. It'll be hurting yourself if you take it hypocritically. So if there's sin in your life, confess it. If you need to come to the altar, come and pray. If you need to come for me to pray with you, I'll pray with you. Brother Don will pray with you. Some of the deacons will pray with you. But Tim will pray with you. Anyway, I'll pray for yourself. Just come. You don't need a priest. So the altar's open. While this invitation goes on, the altar's open. I invite you to come if you need to come because when this is over, in five minutes, we're going to begin communion. Let's start our meeting. God so loved the world that he, that he truly saved the wretch like me. I'm so undeserving of God's love. I have turned my back on him time and time again in my life. Yet, his love for me is steadfast. Did he not leave the 99 sheep and go in search of the one? I am that one. And this is my story. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him might not perish.
the world to save you. Do not be deceived by the lies of men in the world. Turn away from sin and darkness. Turn to the light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. His truth will set you free. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light. Heavenly Father, for the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world.